Hi everyone, welcome back to Chemistry. In this video, we're gonna go over electrolytes and non-electrolytes, um, which is section 9.2 in your textbook. Um, I will say that we uh, don't spend too much time on this section. We do have a few homework problems uh, that are on your homework, that I so I wanted to go over it a little bit, um, but we're not gonna get super in depth, so we'll try to make this one a quick one. Um, all right, so what are electrolytes? You might've heard of electrolytes. Um, I, a few years ago, you used to hear about them quite a bit, um, especially when smart water first came out, um, because people were like, oh, it has electrolytes in it. Um, so electrolytes are really important for your body. They uh, maintain proper function of your cells and organs. Um, they're found in, you know, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, or I, I should say, uh, those are electrolytes. <laughs> um, so we're going to learn how to kind of identify whether electrolytes or whether solutes are electrolytes or non-electrolytes um, and a little bit more about those. So uh, we categorize electrolytes into two categories. So uh, they're either strong or weak. So what is a strong electrolyte? So when we say strong electrolyte, we mean that uh, the uh, electrolyte dissolve, dissociates 100% in water, producing the positive and negative ions. So just like we talked about last video, NaCl, when we dissolve it in water, it completely dissociates or separates. Um, you'll, you'll hear that term a lot, dissociate. It's kind of like disseper separating completely. Um, it dissociates 100% in water, and you get your sodium ions and your chloride ions kind of floating around in the water. Remember, those water molecules kind of surround each of those ions in your crystal, and they pull them apart. So uh, it's a strong electrolyte, NaCl, because it dissolves, it breaks up into those two different ions. Um, and the, it, it happens that these strong electrolytes, they form solutions that conduct uh, an electric current strong enough to light a light bulb. Um, so you can see that over here. There's an example of that there. So these strong electrolytes are, uh, elect conduct electricity really well. All right, and then we have weak electrolytes. And weak electrolytes dissociate only slightly in water. So unlike strong electrolytes, which completely dissociate in water into their separate ions, uh, weak electrolytes only dissociate a little bit in water. So some of those are gonna separate into uh, their individual ions, but a lot of it is actually going to stay as HF, okay? So over here we have hydrofluoric acid. Um, HF. And uh, what happens when we dissolve it in water here is we, some of it um, does, does dissociate completely into individual ions, um, but then some of it actually doesn't. And it just recombines and becomes HF again. And uh, we, sh we indicate that uh, that slight dissociation, that incomplete dissociation with these, uh, they're called equilibrium arrows. We're not gonna go into them a whole lot in this class, but you see kind of like a forward arrow and a backward arrow. arrow. So some of it is going to dissociate, right? And that's that forward arrow going to the right. And then the backward arrow is showing that actually it doesn't really want to fully dissociate. So they'll, they'll recombine, recombine um, in the backward and you'll actually form your HF again. So kind of a weird concept, but just remember, if you have a weak electrolyte um, and you're trying to write this equation, you're, you need those uh, forward and backward arrows, okay? You need those equilibrium arrows. Just to show that it doesn't fully dissociate. Okay, so then we have non-electrolytes, which are, uh, they just dissolve as molecules in water. So you're not breaking them up into little um, ions or anything. Uh, they just stay as molecules. And a good example of this is methanol. Methanol uh, is, oops, this is methanol, CH4O. And it does not dissolve in water. Um, in, you don't see it break up at all, right? So it just stays as a molecule in water. And the reason for that is actually it is... Yes, it's a non-electrolyte, but also it's non-polar, and water is polar, right? So these don't non-electrolytes don't produce ions in water, and they don't conduct an electric current. And oh, that reminds me, I did want to mention 
weak electrolytes do conduct an electric current, but it's lower, okay? It, it's not lighting up that bulb as well as this one, as strong electrolytes, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and complete each of the following for strong electrolytes in water. So this is for things that completely dissociate in water, and that's why you're seeing this uh, forward arrow only, right? Because it's only going to dissociate, and then it's going to stay that way. So uh, when we form our ions for these, for calcium and chlorine, chloride, what are we going to have over on this end? Are we going to have this, this, or this? Pause the video, try it out. All right, if you said C, you would be correct. Why is that correct? Well, we know that it dissociates in water, okay? It, it, it's a strong electrolyte. It's going to 100% dissociate into, in water. So it can't be A. It's not just going to, we're not going to get the same thing out, okay? Um, what about B? So B has calcium as a two plus ion, which I would agree. I think that's, that's what's going to happen. And that's going to be aqueous because it dissolves in water. And then plus, but this is the, the, the part that I, uh, I want to highlight here. So why aren't, why is it not correct? Why is this not right? Is Cl2 a polyatomic ion that you had to memorize? No, that Cl2 is a, a Cl bonded to itself, right? That would be a molecule. It's not a polyatomic ion that we had to memorize. So this is not correct. So you wouldn't, when you break this up, you're not just breaking it up in half, okay? You need to think about exactly what type of ions you're going to get out. Chloride likes to form a, a one minus ion when it forms an ion, okay? Um, so that's the ion that's going to form when you break this up. Don't just assume that you're going to have chloride bonded to itself, okay? Um, so we break it up into its individual ions. What ions do each of these uh, atoms like to form when they form ions? Um, and that's going to be uh, these two here in C. Um, and then your final step is, is this equation balanced? So we're going to leave a little space here to make sure we have our equation balanced. And let's see. So Ca on the left, we have one calcium. And on the right, we have one calcium. Or I guess let's, let's put a one here for now. So one calcium on the left and one on the right. That works. What about chlorine? We have two chlorines on the left and one on the right. So we need to change this to two. Okay. And that's why you see that two there. Okay. It's that balanced chemical equation. You always have to balance your equations, right? We got to obey the law of conservation of matter. All right, so let's try the next one out. So we got K3PO4, and we're dissolving it in water, and we're told it's a strong electrolyte, so it's going to completely dissociate in water. So we're going to have our ions. We're going to have each of our individual ions on the right here. So what's going to go on the right? Yeah, it's actually going to be A. It's going to be A. And the reason for that is when we're looking at this, what is K going to be? Yeah, K is going to be K plus or K1 plus, right? When we look at the periodic table, potassium's in group one. So it's going to want to give away an electron to become a plus one charge. Okay. Or sorry, a one plus charge. Make that a little clearer. Um, and then we're going to have... Oops, let me draw my aqueous because we're dissolving it in water. Plus, now we have to think about the rest of the molecule. So we have, or a uh, compound, we have PO4 next. What is PO4? Yeah, that's that polyatomic ion, phosphate. You, you needed to memorize that, right? What charge does that have? Yeah, three minus. So this, is, this, is, this whole thing is a polyatomic ion, okay? So your PO4, your phosphate is bonded to your potassium. So we got P, whoop, so we don't want to break that up, PO4, 3 minus, AQ, okay? All right, so um, now we got to make sure we balance it. So let's just put a 1 in front of everything for now, and then let's see. So on the left side, we have three potassiums, 
and you can kind of ignore this too here for a second. <laughs> I don't want that to confuse you. Um, so we have three potassiums and uh, on the left and one on the right. So we better make this a three. And then we have one phosphate on the left and one on the right. I'm not breaking them up when, when I'm the PO4, three minus the phosphate, it didn't break up. It's the same on the right as it is on the left. So I'm not gonna break it up into phosphorus and oxygen atoms when I'm balancing. And that's just gonna make my life a little bit easier. If it did break up and you had phosphorus by itself and then oxygens um, in some other compound or something like that, then you would wanna break it up when you're balancing. Let's try out this learning check. So um, for the first one, I actually want you to do that on your own. Um, we just talked about strong electrolytes. We practiced it a little bit. So try that one on your own and I'll show you uh, the solution in a little bit. Um, for B, I do wanna focus on B because B is a weak electrolyte. Okay, so what does it mean to be a weak electrolyte? It's not a non-electrolyte, so it is gonna break up a little bit in water, but it's only gonna do that partially, right? It's partially dissociating. So what type of arrows would we expect to see? Yeah, you'd want to see those forward and backward arrows, okay? Or you can call them equilibrium arrows. So uh, let's go ahead and populate this. So we got H3PO4. Ah! Oh, hold on. Got to give myself a little more room here. H3PO4. AQ. Um, and then we have... Uh, we got to figure out what we're going to make. So um, this one's a little bit of a weird example because uh, it does require you to know how this is going to break up. Um, and it, would, it wouldn't be super intuitive So um, with, in our class yet. So for, uh, for now, I'm going to tell you that it's going to make H plus aqueous and H2PO4. So actually what ends up happening is one of your H uh, your hydrogen ions is broken up and it's going to form H plus. Okay. But the rest of your hydrogens are going to stay bonded to your PO4. Okay. Um, so kind of weird, uh, but it's just because when we put it in water, um, it's one of those hydrogen uh, atoms is going to be is very acidic. So it wants to uh, form H plus in water. So, um, you wouldn't be expected to know that on an exam. I wouldn't give you a question like this. I would give you a weak electrolyte that would be, um, uh, that you wouldn't have to know how it, that it broke up just like this. You would be able to separate it into its uh, individual ions a little bit easier. All right, so, but let's just double check that this is balanced. Um, so we got three H's on the left and three on the right. We got one PO4 on the left and one on the right. Yeah, so this is balanced. Um, so the, the main thing that I'd be looking for um, when you write these uh, in your homework and on uh, an exam would be your uh, equilibrium arrows or your forward and backward arrows to show that it's partially dissociating. And then um, on the right, I'd be looking for uh, ions, okay? And then for this last one, um, we, this is actually not uh, an electrolyte of any kind, it's a non-electrolyte. And the reason for that is um, this is table sugar. And when you dissolve this uh, sucrose table sugar in water, it's actually just gonna stay as a molecule. So just like this example up here, methanol, you've got CH4O. When you put that CH4 in water, it's just going to stay as a molecule, okay? And it's not gonna light up that light bulb. Um, so this would be an example of the same, same idea. Solid sugar is not going to dissolve in water. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our, or write our chemical equation. So we start off with solid sucrose, and we're going to be left with sucrose still. It's just going to be still it's, uh, in a molecule form. Um, uh, but it's going to be aqueous now because we've now dissolved it in water. All right. Well, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, let me show you this solution for the first one and I'll see you in the next video.